Welcome to Dorsta. I'm Kino Gri. Any longtime viewer of the channel will know me as a super dimensional time traveling VR exploring magical girl. But did you know that I also have access to meat space? I'm taking my meat body on a road trip in the United States of America. Let's see how it goes. Good morning. Welcome to the start of day two. It's about 19 degrees right now, and the weather feels very good. The air is very, very clean. The chocolate smell is gone, and uh, but it's got a nice sagey smell, probably from all of this stuff, which I think is sage bush. Oh, I had sweet dreams, but it was very difficult to get comfortable in the car, so I'm going to stretch out before I go and enjoy this view a little bit. So, we've come about 40 miles and I stopped at a rest stop because I needed to use the bathroom. They didn't have a working bubbler, so I'm just gonna eat some pickles and stuff. Talk about these mountains. These are called Sawtooth Mountains because they have that Giza Giza shape. It is pretty distinctive. It's about uh, 28 degrees right now and getting hotter. So I'm gonna go back to eating my pickles, put on some sunscreen, and then keep on the road. Most of Idaho so far has looked like these mountains, kind of green and brown. And it's all over the place. And that looks like lava, the way it's folded. And in fact, <coughs> this is lava rock. Something really big happened here at one point in time. I hope it's not too windy. We've driven for about six or seven miles along the edge of this lava field. And I've come to the Craters of the Moon entrance. It is so neat that people on Earth brought down craters all the way from the moon to look at. That must be what caused the lava when the impact happened. So I'll go check them out. So I found this rock. It has a wonderful iridescence to it. It is extremely light and it feels like I can crush it in my hand. Yeah. So it has many holes from all the gases and things that escaped. And because of that, it's actually kind of sharp and it um, feels like I'm touching sticky tape because it's ripping apart my fingers. I really wonder what makes these colors. They are quite pretty. I think I found one of the moon craters, but look, there are trees and plants growing all over it. There's a lot of talk here about preserving the pristine nature of it, but there aren't trees and plants on the moon. What are you guys doing? I don't know if you can see it, but straight ahead of me, about mm, maybe a quarter of a kilometer, is a very, very big hole. I'm not allowed to go there because off trail walking isn't allowed in this area. So I'll just talk a bit from here. Anyways, I definitely would go explore it. Temperature is 28 degrees and it's a little bit hot in the sun, but there's a very nice cool breeze. The breeze feels good, but it contributes to the really bad fire conditions here. Everything is very, very dry. And if any kind of fire does start here between this wind, and the dry conditions, the whole area is going to go up. It won't matter a lot to this. This has already been burned. But in other places, we're going to have a real bad time with it. This is part of a larger condition of a mega trout that's been happening on the west coast, or the whole west side of the United States, for maybe probably more than 10 years. You know, any given location has a lack of rain now and again, but human activity complicates it because we transport water when we need it. Some farm in the middle of California isn't getting its rain, it's going to pipe that stuff in or draw it from the aquifer, which has got to come from somewhere. And it's real big news out here now. There's already a fire going on in Oregon. 
um, Washington, Oregon, and California are all fighting over emergency resources, trying to keep stock of as many aeroplanes and bulldozers and trucks and cooking crews and all of that sort of stuff for when their next fire does pick up. And all over there's warnings, even to the point of like uh, if you have chains that you use to pull stuff on your uh, trailer, you know, if those drag on the ground, they cause sparks. Uh, and if those sparks get off the road, they cause fire. It doesn't sound like much, but I saw a semi-truck yesterday that left its chains dangling on the ground, and it was in the nighttime sparking all over the place. Um, but I'm gonna go keep walking now. The wind's died down, so... Well, we've come to the end of the trail. How do I know this? The trail has ended. But there is a purpose for coming out all the way here. So I'm out for a walk on the Blue Dragon Lava Field. <clears throat> and it is remarkably quiet here. I feel peaceful. But it's also 30 degrees out, so I'm going to find some place to cool off. I finally found my crater. I got my moonscape. I got my downward stuff. And there is something wrong, though. Let's see if you can spot it. Let's go a little closer and I'll tell you more about it. So here we are at the bottom of the crater and it keeps going quite some ways. See, this is the problem. Craters are supposed to be broad and deep. They're not supposed to go through into the ground. What they've made is a cave. I mean, you'd think when they were bringing the craters down from the moon, they could have maybe taken a picture of what the craters originally looked like. But it turns out that they couldn't do because these, uh, this was made about 2,000 years ago. And they didn't have cameras 2,000 years ago. So, since they've built us a cave, we can explore it as a cave. It is very cool down here. There's ice on the walls. I can see my breath in the air. And there's water dripping everywhere. This cave is fairly tall for the caves around here, it would seem. And it, uh, well, it's open. There's not much in the way of rocks. So it's pretty nice to walk around in here. If you've never been in a cave, they're kind of a different world. You know, the there's water dripping all over, especially in this cave. You can hear everything bouncing off the walls. Any little sound you make sounds like the sound something else made. Let's turn off the light and see what 20 seconds of being in the dark is like. Oh, I still have to go back up into the hot weather. I'll just do it now. I'll do it now. Well, that was a long day of hiking. We're about 230 miles away from the uh, craters in a small town. And I've come here because my body hurts and it's dirty and I want a long soak and to clean up. So we're going to the lava hot springs. So you have the lava felt later. End of day two. I'm here at a rest stop on the border between Idaho and Utah by Salt Lake City. I stopped to take a nap after the lava hot springs. The springs were a little disappointing because that wasn't lava at all. That was mineral water. But they were very relaxing. There I wasn't worried for coronavirus because everything was outdoors and there was lots of room for everyone, even their big voices. But here, um, Salt Lake City from what I can gather, is in the middle of a big upturn in corona cases, and I just don't want any part of that. So I have a long drive. I don't have anything planned to do until the south side of the state. So I will check back in next time something interesting comes up.
It's a really big day. I had a lot of hiking and then I went to the lava hot springs, which were not lava at all. That was mineral water. I was a little surprised, but as you might recall, I am contractually obligated to talk about boob sliders when they come up. At the hot springs, I had to uh, rent a um, bathing suit, and my bathing suit was just a little bit too big in one place. Well, two places. And if I had a boob slider on the avatar for my meat body, then I would have been able to fix that. But I don't do. Well, I still have a lot of driving ahead of me today, so I'm going to go now. Take care. We'll see you on day three. Places like Craters of the Moon National Park are special because they inspire exploration. I felt this spirit to investigate something every time I found it. Even though it was just a big hole ahead of me, I wanted to get closer. I wanted to go down into it. I came around the corner and I saw hills with trees on them. I wanted to get to know the trees better, figure out how they worked, why they're there. How do they grow on the lava? But there were many things there that I didn't take pictures of and we didn't put into videos. Those are have to be secrets for when you can explore them yourself. We'll see you on day three. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video.